Chuang Gang Ran from Penn State University, and as soon as the mic is all fixed up and working, we're ready to go. Hello. Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Chuang Gang from uh, Penn State University. So today I'm going to talk about Window Guard, systematic protection of the GUI system in Android. This work is collaborated with uh, Dr. Peng Liu and Dr. Sin Sun Chu. So the Android graphic user's interface system, or GUI system, has greatly promoted user experience and uh, has uh, provided great features to the app developers. It is also one of the most sophisticated subsystems in Android. However, in recent years, we have seen a variety of attacks that co compromise integrity and availability of this system. We call them GUI attacks. So to give you an example, um, in Chain's work in Usenix 2014, the authors have demonstrated how an attacker can successfully infer the user activity in the foreground and launch a phishing attack. To be more concerning, this kind of technique has been widely employed by the real malware. For instance, uh, a malware children called uh, SVPen. So a similar attack can also be achieved by a very different attack vector called task hijacking. So this animation shows the example, where in this case, a user attempts to open up PayPal application from the launcher. So instead of open up the real PayPal, a fake U PayPal UI shows up, and the PayPal account and password information is then stolen. It is important to know that in this case, um, the fake PayPal is started or resumed by the system itself instead of the malware. And this is possible by manipulating or abusing a variety of multitasking features provided by the system. And this vulnerability is still affecting the most latest Android versions. Another attack called tab jacking, which borrowed the idea from click jacking in the web security, can trick the user to perform undesirable actions. For instance, clicking on the funny picture in the, uh, in the uh, upper surface will basically, uh, the click will go through the first surface and click on the uh, layer behind it, which uh, incurred some financial loss for the user. And recently, we've also seen a massive amount of ransomware moving from the PC world to the mobile environment, infecting 900,000 user devices within two years. And the typical behavior of this ransomware is to render the undismissible window on top of the screen such that this device is effectively being useless until ransom is paid. Similarly, adware can repeatedly generate uh, or pre uh, present unwanted ad windows on top of the screen. This is not only irritating to the user, but also it can make the user more prone to further malware infection. So given all these malwares and attacks, the users and devices under serious security threats. So there has already, already been some existing defense in both industry and the uh, research community. For instance, Google has taken steps to remedy the security problems in new Android versions. However, the challenge there is that this, the adoption of security feature may take time, partly because the, there are compatible issues for some existing functionalities of older apps, and also, user device may not all be up to date at one uh, over one night. So there, uh, so Bianchi proposed a two-layer defense to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, def uh, to defend against the uh, GUI confusion attack. So the method used a static analysis to vet the uh, the application that may have suspicious behavior. They also propose an on device defense mechanism there. However, some, the diff, one difficulty there is that it is some time for code analysis to really interpret the intention of the program. For, this, for, for instance, for the uh, following two apps, they have the exact behavior to lock the screen. However, the left is a ransomware, whereas on the right is a useful application that it's an app locker uh, and useful for the user. So one challenge we have that is we have a lack of complete understanding of the security implication of Android GUI system. And this is, in this work, we try to understand this and find the root cause of GUI attacks. And after finding the root causes, we propose a new UI integrity model for Android called Android uh, Window Integrity, or AWI. 
We then create Window Guard. It is an implementation of AWI that protects user devices from all GUI attacks. So before I delve into the AWI details, let me quickly walk you through how the GUI system works. So the building block of a GUI system is activity. Activity is an app component that provides GUIs to the users, and it's a fundamental, it is a fundamental um, driver for the app navigation. A window in concept is a visual area on the screen that to, to uh, present the graphic contents. And in practice, it's a container to hold all the GUI components. And activity must hold a window to be meaningful and useful. So this diagram shows the major components of different, uh, uh, major components in the GUI system. Whereas on the left, we have the application process where we have uh, activity window uh, instances. In the middle, we have different system services, including activity manager, window manager services, which are responsible for managing all the activity and windows in the system. And interestingly, we also have a, a surface flinger, uh, which is a daemon process uh, that is responsible for composing all the window surfaces in the system to a frame buffer such that it can be rendered on screen in the next refresh cycle. And the surface flinger also offers a shared memory with the application such that the window can directly draw the contents into the shared memory, which will be uh, written into the frame buffer later. So the, all the activity in the uh, system are managed by uh, Active Manager Service, or AMS, like shown in this uh, diagram. And the activities are organized into tasks. A task is a collection of activities that you would have interacted with in a previous job. And they are ordered into a stack uh, in the order that each of the uh, activity is open, such that user can go back to the previous activity once the current one is finished. And these stacks are called back stacks. And there's one foreground activity in the system at one time, and it's called focus activity. So the windows are managed by WMS, or Window Manager Service, and they are also arranged in a stack called Window Stack. So the um, order of so the windows are ordered in this back stack in this window stack, uh, decided by a numerical value called z order. So the higher this z order value, the higher position the window will be placed into this stack. And if we have two visible windows that overlap with each other, the window with high, uh, reside higher in that stack will be uh, overlaying on the top of the other. Uh, so for instance. As we see in the stack, the navigation bar and the status bar residing on the top of the stack will always be visible in most of the time, whereas the wallpaper uh, sitting at the bottom of the stack will not be shown unless uh, no, there's no other window uh, taking that pixels. So there's another important notion called window tokens. So window token intuitively, it is a provides convenient way for a WMS to quickly find the owner of each of the window. And it is also important authentication mechanism for WMS, meaning that any application want to make modif modification to a particular window has to present to the WMS with the right token. So in this case, uh, for instance, the B cannot, it is impossible for B to uh, tamper with A's token unless it can present, uh, let's say, A2 token to the WMS. We, this is impossible in this case because each application is sandboxed uh, in Android. So we have seen all these existing defenses, including app sandboxing protected by UID, uh, window tokens, as I just described, and the well-known permission system. So the question is, why are we still uh, having security risk? It's, in fact, um, the reason is that a user session is beyond the scope of all the existing protections. So what is a user session? So we define a user session or activity session to be a sequence of activities that users have interacted with in a particular job. So for instance, the user may first start up app A and then some, at some later time it go back to the launcher and start app, uh, app B. And in this case, activity B will start uh, another activity from another app, from uh, say, uh, from C. And um, as we see that this graph is built on the fly, and it, it is a tree rooted from the launcher activity. And there are two activity sessions in this graph. 
which are launcher A1 to A2 and launcher to B1 and C1, uh, C2. So activity session is a way to emulate the, use, the experience of app navigation initiated by the user. And they have two important properties. First of all, the activity in a user session may come from different applications. And secondly, and uh, this is a particularly uh, interesting that Android can provide a great flexibility that allows the uh, apps to control the activity window behaviors. So given, although there are existing security defenses, but there's no security guarantees for the activity session, which is important uh, from user perspective. And that's why the, a lot of GUI attacks are possible because they can arbitrarily manipulate, let's say, the order in the activity session or abruptly uh, opens up a new activity or window. So to resolve this problem, uh, we propose AWI. So the key principle here is that there's no application have the permission to perform any operation that would adversely affect other apps' activity session. So here we introduce another important notion here called display owner. Display owner is an app of focus activity. In the same example here, C2 is a focus activity and uh, C is a display owner. So it means that display owner C owns the screen, have, meaning that have higher privilege in terms of window operations. And uh, the, window, the display owner and this focus user session is protected by AWI. Following, this, following through uh, three legitimacy criteria. Legitimacy of activity session, future windows, and existing windows. So due to the time limit, I will focus on the first one, and please refer to a paper for the, uh, following, uh, for the next two criteria. So the criteria is uh, focused activity session should always be consistent with the backstacks in the AWS, AMS. So this is trying to ensure the history of user activities is inconsistent with the system state. So in other words, formally speaking, it means that there should always be a subset of backstack that is consistent with the uh, activity session. So here shows an example, whereas it's very simple that user want to switch from B to A, and this shows two system states. And if we look at the activity session, and compare that with the system state, we find that there do exist some activity sequence uh, that is consistent with, uh, in line with the activity sessions. Here shows an invalid example, whereas a text hijacking attack happened. So what happens here is that user is interacting with application A, where A2 want to start activity U. By abusing the uh, multitasking features, this U is, instead of placing on top of task A, it is placed on top of a malicious uh, task called uh, M, such that when the user click back button, it go back to the phishing activity of M instead of, but the user still believing that he's working with A. If we look at the activity session here, especially at the second phase, uh, we find that the activity sequence presented in the back stat is inconsistent with the activity session uh, here. We have the M1 and M2 uh, interrupted in, in, the, in this, um, inserted into this activity sequence. So in this case, the security alert is raised. So based on the, um, based on the AWI, we propose, we implement an uh, X post module called Window Guard by hooking various system uh, framework components and uh, Android system. So the Window Guard will prompt the user for the final decision when a security alert happens. So this design is intended to meet the diverse needs of uh, user and app developers uh, in the Android GUI ecosystem. Um, there are five security features provided by Window Guard, such as integrity activity session, as we see in the example, and also legitimacy of window start and resume and all other features. So this example shows, a, uh, this is an example to show how Window Guard block a tap jacking attack. So in this malware, uh, rank Rob is trying to obtain the device domain by showing up a uh, device domain uh, request. And uh, to hide this intention, it quickly overlay uh, uh, untouchable social engineering window on top of the screen. 
such, what's interesting here is that when the user click on this OK button, what happens is it's actually clicking on the layer underneath it, which is to activate the uh, device domain for the malware. So Window Guard can uh, quickly detect this attempt because the current, uh, uh, the current uh, display owner is a system setting instead of the malware. And it will ask the user to take further action, either to block it or ignore it or view the detailed information. So to, to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, Window Guard, we collect attack sec samples of different uh, vectors as shown in the first column, and this table shows the consequences of each of the attacks. So in, it turns out that Window Guard can defeat all known GUI attacks. We also evaluate usability by automatically exercising each of the 12,000 most popular uh, Google Play app for five minutes on devices with Window Guard uh, enabled. And the, the takeaway message here is that only 1% of apps will trigger security alert, assuming that these apps are benign. And among these apps that triggers, most of them have security alert, trigger security alerts only once. So Window Guard also has some limitations. First of all, it introduced 1% of false positive. This is mostly because uh, uh, this is mostly because of the cases where uh, the some uh, because some particular functionality provided uh, by the apps, and also the flexibility uh, of letting user make the final security decision may introduce false negatives. And finally, the current implementation of Window Guard is based on Expos, which can only be used on Groovy device. So in conclusion, we systematically scrutinize security implications of the Android system, uh, GUI system. We propose a new UI integrity model, and we implement Window Guard, which is able to effectively defeat all known GUI attacks. So with that, I would like to uh, thank you all and uh, open to any questions.